Hey guys, it's Miss Burton. We're on part two of our, what did we do last time? We did the best dick figure ever. And you did not know this, but we were headed towards the best cartooning shapes ever because you gotta do something with your stick figure. So we're gonna make a cartoon character and we're gonna use three, count them, one, two, three, three simple shapes that are gonna make your stick figure into a fantastic cartoon character. Ready, go. All right, we're gonna start with an oval and you already know how to make a circle and because we have a really hard time making a perfect circle, we usually make an oval. So an oval is just kind of a pinched or squished circle. So I sketched it first with my number two pencil, my HB pencil. I coordinated my nail color with my pencil today, not intentional. So there's an oval. All right, you know the shape, you love this shape, there it is. We can take the oval shape and I'm just gonna label it oval. And we can speak about pinching, we can pinch one side in. So I'm gonna sketch another oval. Sound effect here for you. And there's my oval. And when I go in with my oval, I'm gonna kind of pinch in one side. So I'm just gonna use a curve and I'm just gonna kind of pinch it in on one side. And what would you call that shape? I would call it a bean. So really simple, take your oval, pinch it in on one side, and you have a bean shape. Now the bean shape is super versatile, meaning you can use it for a variety of things. We're gonna call this a bean. We're gonna spend the most time today on the bean shape and what we can do with that. And the third shape we're gonna do is a teardrop. So a teardrop shape is similar to an oval, but it's pointy on one side. And the teardrop, we're just gonna use a little bit. And then you can kind of bend that around. So teardrop shape, I'm just gonna ink it. All right, I'm using a little pen, drawing pen. Okay, uh, and I didn't label it, teardrop. Teardrop is also the name of a type of trailer that my fiance would love to build for us someday. Could happen, it's gonna happen, all right. Oval bean teardrop, we're good. So let's go back to that stick figure. And Abby, the cat, would like to tell me what type of activity this cartoon character is going to be in. Uh, she would say bending over and washing yourself. It's not really a human thing, and I'm not here to show you how to draw animal cartoon characters today. We're gonna do humans, so. Sorry, Abby, but that's not gonna happen. Well, let's see, we just got back from a hike. So, a hike and a bike ride. Bike's a little bit complicated. So if I take, I'm gonna start with an oval. And if we're doing a cartoon character, generally you want to exaggerate the sizes, the actions, the movements, facial expressions, everything about a cartoon character you want to exaggerate. So the thing with a cartoon character is you usually want to exaggerate the size of the head and make the head extra big. So if I have a person who is hiking, they might be leaning forward to move their motion ahead. So I'm gonna take that spine, that stick that we used, and I'm gonna bend it and I'm gonna kind of exaggerate it. You hear that sound in the background is my cat Mira. She's eating and she is rubbing her name tag against the glass bowl. All right, so here's our neck and our spine. It's all one piece, all those vertebrae in there. I am going to take that collarbone that we learned last time and I'm gonna kind of tilt it. So this person's doing some action. And I'm gonna take the pelvis and I'm gonna kind of tilt that one. So we're gonna go in with that stick figure that we learned last time. And I totally flubbed it last time. I could not remember right and left. And I said I was gonna alternate the same side arm and leg going in different directions and I totally did not do that. So let's see if I can get that right this time. All right, so this is gonna be the right arm and I'm gonna have this one kind of, maybe they're kind of power walking. So shoulder, elbow, wrist, and I'm just gonna put the hand up like that. So if this arm is going backwards, this is the left arm. So remember to match up those lengths more or less. And they're kind of going fast, all right. So then if this arm is going forward, the this leg should be going back. So right arm forward, right leg back. So I'm gonna take this one and put it back. Now, because this is a cartoon character, 
Um, I am going to let the arms and legs be about the same length just because of exaggeration. All right, so I'm gonna use that teardrop shape that I mentioned. I'm gonna kind of bend it here. And my feet are not the same size, so something's wrong there. And I'm gonna put this one a little bit back. Beauty of an eraser, you can change your mind. It's your prerogative. All right, bend to that foot. All right, and so last time we put in an oval to show the rib cage, but what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna go into that bean shape. So if my character is moving towards the left, I want them facing the left, in which case their head's gonna be turned a little bit. We call that a three-quarter view in art. And I'm just gonna pinch in that side of the bean. I hope you can see, even though I'm in using pencil, I'll go over it later. So I'm using a bean shape for the head. And now that whole torso, that's the upper body from the shoulders down to the pelvis, that whole area, I'm gonna use a bean. And I'm gonna think this through. I can kind of start with an oval, but I'm thinking about the movement of the spine. So since I have the spine kind of tilting backwards, I'm gonna bend the bean around and go ahead and, and let it curve down underneath. Okay, and that might be too thick, I can always adjust it. So here's my basic person character. Um, let's think here, if I wanna give my character some facial features, that's my cat jumping into the window and knocking the blinds if you're hearing a bumping sound. So I'm gonna call these hemisphere lines, they're kind of showing three dimensions in this face shape so I can see where the center would be. So I'm just gonna use that oval shape and I'm gonna make a couple of oval eyes. They don't have to be perfectly matched. And I'm gonna use the oval shape but I'm not gonna close it. I'm gonna make a nose. So it's kind of an oval shape. I'm gonna use an oval shape and again, I'm not gonna close it. I can think of this as kind of a, the letter C and this is gonna be for the ear and I'm just gonna follow inside a little bit. Now I can shade in my ovals if I want. And then say I'm walking and talking, I'm hiking with my partner and we're yapping away and we're just having a good old time because hiking is rad, you feel so good. All right. So here's my basic character. See how easy that was? That was super easy. Check it, check it. Okay, so it's still a stick figure. It's got a couple of beans added to it. I probably wanna give it some hair. Probably wanna wear pants if you're going outside. Yeah, I recommend it. So I'm just going to go over these shapes and thicken them up a little bit. Now, if you wanna be fancy and add the general shape of some musculature here, you can think about that on the, on really all of the parts of our limbs, our arms and legs, the bigger part of the muscle is kind of two thirds or three quarters of the way up. So if you wanted to put in an oval there, an oval here, just to kind of get some placement for where a muscle might go, if you have some musculature and you wanna include it, that's a way that you can do that. So I'm just gonna kind of go on either side of this stick to flesh it out. Probably wanna bring it in a little bit when you get up to the wrist and the ankle because that tends to kind of taper or get a little more narrow in that place. Now I know that there has been some controversy somewhat recently around this idea of a thigh gap. Now a cartoon character, you can give it a thigh gap if you want, you can make it thicker. Uh, let's see what leg is in front. I think this left leg, man, I'm bad at right and left. My brain just doesn't want to go there. All right, so that left leg is in front. So I've just kind of gone on either side of the stick figures. I gave myself some little ovals in there if I want to put some um, semi-realistic musculature in, but it's a cartoon character. It doesn't need to be real. So you can go extra small if you want. Talk about exaggeration. You can decide if you wanna wear a specialty shoe. If I'm hiking, I might be wearing an athletic shoe. I might be wearing a hiking boot. So I can go in and get a little fancier if you want, but you can base it just loosely on a teardrop. And you can kind of bend that. And if you wanna add a rugged outsole, if you wanna add some laces, does not have to be fancy. That is the sound of frozen pizza coming out of the oven. Mmm, pizza. Okay, and a neck, we wanna give it a little thickness and I'm realizing this neck is, this head is a little off center here. So I'm gonna move this back a little. 
Um, cartoon characters, it's common to give them a little spindly, thin neck. I'm um, just going to bring in some hair. If this is me, I have fluffy hair. So I can kind of... No need to get fancy. Do it how you want it. All right. And if you've got a, an open neck or you're wearing a, a hoodie, the hoodie's going to go around the back. Okay. You can kind of look in the mirror at the clothing that you're wearing if you have a mirror around. However it comes in. All right. And I'm not going to get much fancier than that since I want to keep this video short. So I'm just going to do a little inking. And then once I'm pretty sure my ink has had time to dry, I can go in and erase. If you have a large eraser, that can be helpful. I'm just going to leave a little white space in my inking here to indicate the reflection in the eye. Now, cartoonists will often put the eyebrows over the hair. Eyebrows are a really important part of facial expressions and especially in a cartoon character the main thing for your facial expressions are your mouth and your I'm trying to remember what I'm doing here your eyebrows. So your eyes are generally gonna stay more or less the same. I just did something weird here and that's okay I'll just kind of kind of fake it. All right. Uh, there's a lot of options in how you do facial expressions. We can go over that in another video. But for now, I wanted to give you the basic idea of how you could use these super useful shapes to flush out your stick figure. Hopefully you've been practicing that stick figure. And you can get lots of different um, body poses, lots of different types of action in there. So just think before you ink and decide what's important. You can always ink less to start with and then go back in and ink some more. Okay, think about what small details you wanna show in clothing. And I did not go over some simple things that you can do with a hand. Get some. Strings hanging down from a hoodie here. You know, really with a cartoon hand, it's generally done as three fingers and a thumb, just to keep it simpler. Remember that we want to exaggerate, but also simplify in cartooning. Thank you to my cat, Mira, for adding some sound effects. So let me think about how does this hand go here. Put the thumb on the wrong side. All right. two, three, just kind of put it back like that. Good enough, good enough for a cartoon character. All right, inking. This is gonna go in front. Okay, okay keeping it simple. And probably want to double check that the size of your feet approximately match each other. All right, looks good. Good enough for free. All right. There's a nice shot of my cliff bars. Okay, guys, well. That's it for tonight, so go ahead and try out your best stick figure. Add on some extra shapes there. You can add some beans, a bean for the head, a bean for the torso. Flesh out your arms and legs, and I'd love to see what you do. Practice makes better. All right, take care, guys.